our talk today is um, is also about uh, diversity uh, in IT teams. And uh, at the beginning, we just would like you to remind what is so important to talk about diversity today, because it's not always a buzzword. It's uh, giving a certain improvement to all the teams in all the areas, starting from the top management down to the bottom of the very essence of IT teams. It improves performance, it improves creativity and many other areas. And uh, starting from this point, we wanted to talk about two different aspects of diversity in our everyday work. And I, as a developer who is also an IT convert with a non-technical background, I would like to speak about new sources of IT employees based on my example, my journey and the journey of my friends who also decided to move to this industry and the benefits of comp competence diversity. And Pavel? Uh, and guys, I'm going to cover another part of the, what we call new influence is uh, actually openness to work in international teams, international projects. Um, I'm not going to speak about uh, benefits of the diversion itself. Uh, I believe, you know, since you're here, you, most of you believe in this, but I would like to cover uh, more about my experience, our experience in uh, working in international teams, the kind of problems we had, uh, how we f were fixing this, and uh, basically how to we, you can you know, build inclusion to take advantage of the diversity. And please note, uh, we are not uh, researchers, we are not coaches. These are our personal stories based on, uh, on our uh, experience. Um, we do not uh, convey any conv confidential information here and all the names are fic fictional uh, uh, that will appear uh, along the way except for ours. But uh, we think that this might inspire you uh, in, in your everyday work and maybe um, will somehow open your eyes to new ideas and some things you have never thought about. So maybe let's start with, with the first part, the so-called by me new wave of developers uh, that is entering the job market or has been entering the job market for the past, I'd say, four, uh, four years. And uh, how do we define those people? How do we work with them? So let's take a look at the Polish job market. I probably you all know this research that states that 50,000 developers are needed right now on the Polish uh, job market and the increase in uh, demand for uh, uh, software developers is going to rise and um, this, is, this sounds uh, really positive but you need to find those people from somewhere and um, generally the graduates of the universities live in the number of about 13,000 each year uh, these are just technical, uh, technical uh, specializations. However, you need to remember that not all of those people want to work in IT or have relevant uh, experience that would, like, uh, that would allow them to start commercial work right away. Sometimes they need some introduction. And, um, well, this is, this is just, just a number. On the other hand, you have the 6,000 so far uh, bootcamp graduates that are already on the market. The difference between those two groups is that those bootcamp uh, graduates uh, were uh, strictly focused to work as um, IT professionals, usually software developers. So they already have uh, the target they are they are uh, facing, and they they have trained um, specifically to provide some. Uh, practical knowledge that will uh, be applied in commercial projects. So these are the two groups that are feeding uh, the needs I mentioned earlier. And I'm an IT convert myself. Uh, I wanted to share the story because you can see from this uh, that probably uh, nothing's impossible. I studied archaeology, uh, but then decided to move into something that would give me a better, I'd say, um, well, influence and would uh, actually uh, allow me to practice my hobby, which was new technologies. Uh, and after eight years in this industry and um, uh, reaching the position of senior manager, I actually decided that 
maybe it would be good to create something instead of just telling stories about products of other people. And then when, when the boom of uh, bootcamp schools uh, came up, and I actually applied for, uh, to one of them and finished the uh, front-end uh, bootcamp, then decided to move further with postgraduate studies, and right now I'm also a Java developer. Uh, but, well, this is one of the many stories I have many friends and actually the story of one of them influenced uh, my decision uh, very strongly and that also can share such stories. Um, my friend who's a philosophy graduate also works today as a, um, a developer and it was her story that showed me that maybe I do not need to follow the career path uh, that uh, was quite obvious at me at that point, that I can change something. And I must say that my story already influenced, I think, uh, six to eight people whom I know directly and who approached me and asked me how, how I did it. Uh, and uh, one more thing that's important about this group is half of them are women. You will not meet such a rate of women among uh, university graduates in technical fields, but among bootcamp uh, graduates it's quite common that this group is extremely diverse in terms of gender, uh, age and um, background they're coming from. And when you enter this market you're full of emotions and usually you want them to be the positive ones, because with, with, uh, when you decide to, to make a step back, to start a new career, you will be full with, of, with ambition, willingness to learn, and openness to new technologies, new people that you meet. And, but you need to remember that if you're left alone, or, um, uh, comes the, or there comes a routine, uh, you will be facing disappointment, the already mentioned by Art Imposter Syndrome, so you need to tackle those things and you cannot tackle them alone. So to drive the positive attitude among such people uh, when you're their manager, you need to remember about a few things that will pay off not only in terms of working with IT converts, but working in, a, um, in, a, in every team as well. So honest feedback that comes often on a regular level. If you give feedback, uh, three months after hiring someone, it's too late because those people do not know if they're going, if they're doing their job good or right. You need to have some mentorship when you're entering a, a commercial market. Uh, even if you have, if you think you have some practical knowledge, it's always uh, have good to have someone who will guide you. Diversified tasks, this is quite obvious. You, you will get tired do, doing bug fixing of the same, uh, uh, same type of bugs all the time. So you need to have some area for development and ability to grow, ability to see uh, beyond your current position in the, uh, in the company. And also what's uh, important with working uh, in, with IT converts is a chance to use, give those people a chance to use previous experience to somehow uh, better, better everyday work and improve performance of the team. And what you, will, uh, what you can expect in return, first of all, look beyond their current technical skills, because after bootcamp they, ca they can be quite limited. But you need, if you look beyond that, this will really pay off because usually those people have really high level of communication skills. Some of them have experience, like myself, uh, working in communication industry or marketing industry. Some will have a direct exposure to customer uh, relations, which will also pay off when talking to your customers or the business owners or product owners on a daily basis. Uh, some will have business understanding of the field you're working for, for example, financial industry. This is also very valuable. And um, also team management experience like myself, I uh, had experience in managing several teams. And right now, although I'm not the most senior in development, of course, uh, in, uh, in our team, I, I was given a, uh, the pleasure to lead a small team and deliver a product with developers much more senior than myself in technical areas. So 
just give those people a chance and use their creativity. And you will also, uh, you can also expect diversity in different areas that are usually beyond reach when you just look at the, at the technical uh, field graduates. So you will have gender and age diversity. Age is also quite valuable. I decided to convert at the age of 32. So for a long par uh, part of my new job experience, I was the oldest in the team. And it was never a problem, but it helps uh, me, my, myself and the team to learn completely new things about work attitude and um, um, yeah, work-life balance. Uh, and you will also get people with different, different backgrounds, which also pays off in building bonds within a team because people will not always talk, will do not always want to talk about the newest trends in Java development or uh, front-end development. They also want to reach beyond that and people with different backgrounds will facilitate this area. And uh, well, uh, what's more, of course, motivation and willingness to learn and moreover, willingness to share what they've learned. Because the, way, the best way to learn something is to practice uh, uh, your, your knowledge. And here I would like to share my example already mentioned about accessibility because I was actually uh, entrusted by my boss uh, with a accessibility project of um, making a really big online portal accessible uh, to people with uh, disabilities. And this is very specific knowledge. It may not sound very appealing, already mentioned in the morning uh, today, unless you understand what's, uh, what, what is behind this, what are the needs of the users. And these are not only the needs of the users uh, with disabilities, but actually this affects every, every user of, um, of online product. And my boss actually uh, looked into, into the experience I gained and uh, he decided that, well, it would be good to share this, uh, this knowledge with the whole team. And from this one idea, uh, a whole company-wide training came up, then boot camps, then also uh, conference talks. And uh, I met many developers, many UX designers, uh, graphics, who are totally unaware of the topic and right now they're also spreading this knowledge further. So you can see that from one simple idea and the motivation to, to uh, like keep the knowledge in your head, such, uh, such uh, things uh, can come up. And I know many stories um, and I can give many examples of IT converts who also have a similar uh, experience. And just uh, to summarize, um, what will come with IT converts, with juniors, is the competence diversity within the team. And it's good to remember um, that when you hire ten, a, a team of 10 senior developers, they will not always be happy because there will be, their, their experience will, will not be uh, that much valuable because every, everyone will want to do the, the project by his uh, rules, by his experience. And that's why competence diversity will help to facilitate many, many of the processes because it will give a chance to divide the team into mentors and mentees. The mentors will be able not only to practice their knowledge and to put into reality their ideas, but also to gain some communication training and some um, new form of appreciation from the team. And for mentees, of course, this will be a chance to boost their knowledge quickly and maybe use their motivation to come up with new ideas and pushing the team into exploring uh, new technical, uh, technical areas. Um, this is uh, all for me for now. I would just like to mention that from my perspective um, and from my pr uh, past experience, working in an international team is something completely perfect because here's the balance between technical and uh, soft skills uh, that uh, given my past experience is just the best one. So I'm passing to Pavel. Thanks, Ola. Uh, so guys, again, uh, my name is Pavel. Um, I'm running teams, uh, recently work uh, a lot with international teams. Uh, I'm performing in, in the organization, I'm performing as a delivery manager or 
agile litro or something like this. So um, going to speak about my experience here. So as you know, it is pretty often very challenging to to do a software development project. You know, there are many, many, you know, many, many, many issues on every level. Even working as a local team for a, for a customer which is, you know, in the same city, uh, there are still many problems. But uh, it is even it becomes even more challenging when it comes to you know uh, when you can't have people in the same room. Uh, when uh, you work with people who has different experience, who has different style, you, when you can see obvious cultural differences as well, right? But what I'm going to present and want you to remember, this is it is challenging, and but once you gain some experience, it's uh, basically mm, the same way you do when you work with any team, right? So it's not possible. It's not impossible. You need uh, you need to you know figure out a couple of things and probably later it will be easy for everyone. Yeah, it's all about learning. Uh, so um, I will talk uh, a lot about uh, one of the project journey. So uh, I joined I joined certain project uh, around one and a half year ago after I don't know after four months of development something like this. And uh, this was a pretty great project. Uh, it was investment, but uh, not just from our company. It was a uh, couple different companies' investment. Uh, so basically, we had uh, two, uh, two sponsors, two entities. And uh, the team itself was spread out across the globe. So we had five countries. So we had uh, UK, we had India, we had Poland, Belarus. Uh, Estonia as well. So, if you can imagine, so it's uh, not just working in five countries, but uh, working in uh, different locations, right? We had seven or eight different locations, but more important, there are different time zones as well, right? Uh, it wasn't so bad, it's not like US, nice hours of uh, not overlapping at all, uh, but still, it's uh, kind of cause you many, many issues, right? Uh, the team was pretty big, like it was 70 plus people, delivery team itself, I'm not counting the marketing thing. So it's a pretty big enterprise uh, product we were building. Many technologies, actually number of technologies yeah, still scares me out here. Yeah? And we, we, we have uh, many enterprise clients as well, like uh, top, 10, top 10 in their business. Okay. Uh, so once I joined this project, it uh, was uh, there was many good things, but also there were pretty much I think uh, problems, pretty much problems there. So just to give you a view, uh, to get a view um, what kind of problems there was, I maybe let me ask you a couple of questions. You guys, uh, how many of you connected to a software development? Okay, how many you you so most of you probably know what agile scrum is, right? Yeah, and uh, mm, how many of you are leading people on whatever team leading? Okay, pretty many of you. So great. So uh, we had we had as I mentioned we had couple of teams. I think it was four teams at this time. Now it's uh, a bit more. Uh, and so those teams were located uh, all based in location. So most of the team members were in the same location. Like we had two teams in India, uh, one team in Estonia, one team in Poland, something like this. Uh, moreover, which is not a scrum way, those teams were focused on component development, technical component development. So as a result, they have introduced their own standards quality standards, they are all, they implementing their own practices, right? And, um, and then if you can imagine, uh, there was 
a lot of tension between teams in the first place. So one team designed core component, another team was supposed to start integrating with, and uh, it appears the requirements from one team doesn't fit what was developed, and uh, there was a struggle in who, could, who should change what. So there was a tension between teams. Uh, but also there was a tension uh, between people itself, uh, especially when it comes to, so we had a couple of teams with, uh, you know, uh, people mixed in different locations. Um, so limited collaboration uh, was a problem, yeah. This competence silence I was mentioned based on technical components was really a big problem as well. So uh, as, a, as a result, if you imagine, there was a lot of noise. So from leader perspective, noise is one of the worst things that could happen because um, no one can tell you what actually state is, where the problem lies in, and you need to spend a lot of time trying to figure out, you know, uh, w where we are actually, right? How to solve the problem. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, what was great about the project, and since then it's still a great journey for me, uh, the people themselves were pretty amazing, like um, mm, I visit every country and uh, there was really nice people there, very kind, and, uh, but from project perspective, uh, product development perspective, um, those people were really focused, uh, really engaged, and so they wanted to bring some value. Uh, product itself was pretty innovative, so we, we are, we are we're building enterprise marine insurance platform uh, using blockchain uh, technology, using uh, cloud and stuff like this, so many modern technologies. Uh, so it is interesting both from business and technical perspective. And uh, not, this is not some you know, kind of usual, usual application uh, to do. There is a lot of inventions there. So basically we're discovering a lot. So because of this, you know, there is something like a startup mindset, right? So you, you focus on your product and trying to, you know, uh, do, not, uh, do not, you know, um, think about organization obstacles. Because EY is a big corporation, there are, there are also a lot of, you know, uh, procedures and stuff like this, like probably in every corporation. So, but if you, if you focus, if you have a startup and you kind of focus on this, it doesn't give you any problem at all. Like, so you just basically doesn't think about this. And uh, what was one, I think, would, uh, which is the best thing uh, here is uh, we had a great support from our stakeholders. So from senior management. So uh, there, there were the people who had a vision, who understand the learning process, and who, uh, who also uh, are willing to change something in order to make things happen, in, in order to make people uh, be more happy on the project, in order to improve their results as well. So, and uh, what is more important, those people are always, uh, uh, there was no excuse for bad behavior. So there was stamping out the bad behavior, which I believe this is, this is pretty great. So, Atmosphere was great, it was pretty healthy, so most of the problems were actually, you know, uh, on, mm, uh, on meritorical level, yeah. But still, uh, there was some struggling, so here I would like to, you know, to give you an idea what, uh, what from a mm, high level what we've done uh, and uh, uh, how it's worked for us, yeah. So, but, bef but uh, before I go further, I would give you, I would like to give you a couple examples of kind of problem um, people has, because uh, this is partially from my perspective, like uh, uh, from leadership perspective, but uh, we'll give you a couple, a uh, couple slides of uh, exact problems, real, uh, real problems what people have. So this is about Marco. So Marco was a really good developer with big seniority. I, I think uh, he was a, he he he's an expert, right? But um, and Marco has uh, a lot of knowledge in particular domain, and uh, he wanted for everyone to follow his ideas because actually those ideas were pretty good. Uh, however. Um, it was not easy for him to convince most of the people to do this. 
right? So whatever he, when, whenever he was trying to force something, uh, he was very frustrated because often it didn't happen, right? Uh, I bet you all you know this kind of situation, right? If you can imagine where this guy was from. Poland? Which country? It, he was from Poland, yes. Yes, he was from Poland. Uh, correct. Uh, so next example is about Anna. So Anna was a part of a scrum team for a long time. Uh, and uh, for whatever reason, she moved to another team which, which followed Kanban, right? So, uh, uh, so this team was actually confident enough to, you know, so they limited even, uh, even at wherever ceremony. So they, they used Slack to e exchange his ideas, their ideas or stuff like this. So basically, for a long time, there was no, no call for her, there was no information, there was no feedback for, 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 for Anna about you know, where we are in the project as a team, where we are, are we delivering our goal, are we, am I doing a good job, right? So, um, and this was pretty frustrated for her, so she, uh, she started to lose, lose motivation, okay? And any idea where Anna from? Uh, Anna was from India, yeah? Uh, actually, this is, uh, uh, okay, we'll talk about it later. Uh, Olaf. Uh, Olaf was, uh, uh, Olaf is a middle developer. Uh, and uh, so, it's probably, there is a joke about programmers, right? So, uh, let me just try to translate it in English. So, uh, I'm, I, w I, I'm not going to speak, um, sorry guys. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. I didn't study for five years uh, engineering to speak with people. Like so, this was kind of guy. Uh, uh, so he um, he did a great code. He was uh, very picky when it comes uh, to code review. So he wanted everyone else also to you know to fix even the smallest things. Right, but on the other hand, uh, uh, the cer certain requirements, certain stories he he delivered uh, was not really fulfilled the needs of the product owner. So there was couple couple reasons for this. Sometimes it's, he didn't understand the requirements, and he didn't grab a call and didn't coach, uh, didn't catch with a business analyst. Uh, uh, sometimes it was, uh, you know, not everything was defined properly in the requirement itself. So whatever it was, uh, the Olaf didn't want it to get in touch with business analysts to, um, to clarify the story, to present him what he did. So we often we found out about that uh, requirements are, doesn't really fulfill um, pretty, pretty late, like in the almost at the end of the release, for example, something like this. Uh, but the motivation from him uh, was basic, but very simple, that uh, this was basically based on his previous experience. So in previous company, previous job, he, he was a part of the team of developers who didn't get any contact with whoever else about some coordinator. So he got the requirement, sent by online or published on conference, wherever, and their only goal was to uh, uh, to develop as is its uh, requirements uh, defined and provide a good quality, and that's it. But from our perspective, it was a problem because uh, value was missing here, right? Uh, I think this is the last example. And Olaf, Olaf actually was uh, actually Olaf actually was from Estonia. Is from Estonia. Uh, one more example about Andrew. Uh, so. So Andrew was a manager in his organization, but in our project he performed a business analyst role, so kind of proxy product owner, something like this. So he basically uh, created the requirements and the team he, he worked with was settled in India. So his problem was that during every planning session, during review session, uh, uh, I'm referring to Scrum, uh, so ceremonies. So uh, his problem was that he, um, 
he didn't get any feedback about you know level of requirements. So uh, he he was used to work in a different way with more creative people. So he assumes that this level is okay for planning session, but uh, during the session not, not much happens. So all he get is uh, confirmation from the team that they understand the requirements and they have no comments about this. Uh, and, but he realized what's happening, uh, but uh, it was a problem for him. Any idea where the team was from? Andrew was from UK, but the team was in India. Okay, so basically what he get is, yes, we understand, no problem, but um, after a couple sprints, he found out that during the sprint itself, there were so many questions, and uh, the planning session was not effective at all. Uh, so you might say, uh, you might say um, some of these problems uh, because of uh, project structure, organizational uh, problems as well. But uh, this was my thought at the beginning as well. But also, I find out this uh, a lot of, uh, it is true, yes, but a lot of this was because of actually cultural differences. So on the next slide, I want to show you a view how you, we can tackle the differences, especially cultural differences, OK? Uh, so there are a couple of researches around uh, uh, around diversity and cultural differences, which basically show us what are the patterns, right? So there is recently we spoke with Art uh, about uh, you know I think it's Hofstede research, which uh, was performed by IBM in 50 something countries in, in IBM subsidiaries all over the world. Uh, but here I would like to speak about uh, GlobeSmart, which actually gives similar idea. And uh, in UI, we actually use this uh, to, to, you know, to, 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 to teach people to uh, build an awareness of the differences itself. So what is a GlobeSmart? So GlobeSmart basically provides us uh, five dimensions. As you can see here, uh, horizontally, I'm not sure if there is a marker here. Yeah. So uh, first dimension is basically independence level of a particular person. How confident uh, the person is working independently against how if he is more willing to work uh, is a collective uh, is a collective mind within the team. Next one is about egalitarianism, egalitarian level. Yeah, so some people don't care about you know uh, whoever is a director, manager, or if I'm just a uh, regular developer, I can you know speak as equal to each other. This is egalitarianism, right? But as you can see here, for example, for India, guys from India are actually very status oriented, so they really respect their organization levels, right? And this is. Uh, and uh, the reason for Andrew, if you remember, to not get any feedback, it, it was exactly because he was a manager and the developer, the developer teams were much lower uh, comparing to him in the organization. Uh, next one is, uh, is a risk. So as you can see, guys from United Kingdom uh, actually willing to take a lot of risk, right? But again, Poland is somewhere risk moderate, if you can say. So they, they want some lack of certainty, but they actually want to take some risk as well. Right? This is what it's all about. Direct being direct versus being indirect. So I, I think it's pretty obvious for whoever was working you know, with UK or with India or with United States, for example, United States people are very, very direct. So if he's, or, or like Art mentioned, like Nordic people, if they think something, they will tell it straightforward. They will not going to, you know, put it in a beautiful words and trying to, you know, go around the bush if you like, right? However, in some nations you can, you don't want to put someone in a bad position, especially in front of each other, if others, so you'd like to, you know, use a different style, different wording to say, I don't agree with you, right? 
uh, but you will not say it directly. And the last dimension here is uh, uh, being task or relationship oriented. Like for example, myself, I'm uh, I'm very, I'm one, almost 100% task oriented. So it means that I prioritize tasks over over relationship. S and uh, for me, I mean really goal oriented, schedule oriented stuff like this, right? However, it doesn't mean that uh, I'm not aware uh, about relationship. It doesn't mean I d uh, don't understand the power of relationship as well. So this is what we call, and I actually uh, embrace people in my team and uh, you know, whoever in the project uh, to, you know, to build a relationship, to speak to each other about little things, about whatever. Uh, and this is what we call uh, work style adjustment, like so it doesn't mean whoever is uh, wherever people are all in this graph, right, if they more task oriented, if they are direct or indirect, it doesn't mean bad thing, right, at all. The thing is depend on the uh, on the needs, depends on the auditory they speak to, they might adjust their work style a bit just to make life easier. For example, as I'm, I'm pretty direct as well. And uh, I have uh, my program manager uh, is, uh, is in UK and uh, he's, uh, he's Indian guy, yeah? So when, when I start working with him, is I, it was pretty hard for me to, you know, to read between lines, like because he, despite that he was, uh, from UK, he was pretty. He was Indian, so he was pretty indirect. So uh, after after we know each other better, I directly ask him, Sagar. So when we are uh, on this, we we are just two of us in the room. Just please talk directly to me. Yeah, and this works. It's easier for me now, but it means that he is able to adjust itself, right? So what I wanted to say here is. And those are actually countries we, we have or had in the project. Uh, one more thing, uh, keep in mind, don't take it literally, Th those results here, don't take it literally. These are based on average population for every country, right? So, uh, as I mentioned, I'm pretty task oriented, I'm pretty direct, so I don't fit Poland at all. As you can see, Poland is, for most of the stuff, is moderate, right? Uh, but those are population average results. So if you are interested to understand, do the same for exact people in your team. Yeah, pretty good tool. Yeah, and the, however, even if you're not going to do this, the awareness of this uh, dimension of these differences are, helps a lot. So. Here, I would like to spend a couple, uh, couple minutes speaking about what we actually did to, uh, to, mm, to make the situation better. We actually, initially, we didn't thought about, you know, cultural difference and stuff like this. So we just focus on uh, make the product running st more straightforward, more in, uh, in some structure, trying to introduce uh, real Scrum uh, and do the same for all the teams and stuff like this. <coughs> However, apart from this, so one thing we did in the first place is we make the people to not be location based. So for every team, we basically have people from at least two countries, often three counters. For example, you know, two developers from Poland, two developers from India, uh, business analysts from UK, a tester from India, something like this, right? There was different combinations. The only thing we wanted to make sure is that being in the same location, we didn't want to have person within the team who is alone in the location and being a part of the team. Okay, so we had at least two people in the location who are a part of the team. And we started doing basically uh, better Scrum. Uh, and this was one simple thing. However, 
uh, it was not enough. It was not enough because, uh, because of those differences. So from my perspective, we spent a bit more time on soft level, uh, trying to coach people, listen to people, adapt to, you know, to their, based on their feedback. Uh, so basically, we, we spent more time on leader, leaders' behavior. And that's it, obviously that's it. So if you can see here on outside, we have kind of tools, supportive tools, Scrum, Management 3.0, uh, some soft skills screenings we've done as well, like uh, GlobeSmart, uh, liberating structures. But also what it was more important, I believe, that we spent pretty much time uh, speaking about uh, soft stuff, like behavior, if you'd like to, yeah. Okay, so I'm not sure if you have uh, some time. Yeah, so pretty, pretty note, right? Uh, so I just go, uh, go quickly through this. Uh, uh, those are kind of tips you can do uh, so very quickly. So do not let people uh, speak to each other on Slack only or on a call only, yeah? So, uh, let them speak each other about their personal stuff, engage them to con they connect to each other at all. Because, you know, developers, as we heard the joke, do not have tendency to share stuff. So embrace them to do this, to, to speak to each other, to visit each other, and so on. One thing which actually we found out, those are traditions. So uh, I'm not sure how it started. Someone being in India, someone being in Poland, Estonia, I don't know, but uh, we are one of our tradition is whoever is coming to another location, he, he brings some sweets. And this is great, people appreciate this. This is kind of card we get from India uh, together with sweets. Uh, and uh, do integration of party as well, right? If you can, you will never get anyone, everyone in the same room, right, in, in, as in our case. But still, some of people would mi mix together. It worked really great. And uh, one thing I would like to mention here is one-to-one. -one. So uh, don't get me wrong, it's not about, uh, it's not about feedback, but uh, it's more about every leader should speak more with people personally, to understand their feeling, understand their pain points, and more important, trying to understand their motivation, right? So motivation, because in, in different culture, cultures, even if you, you know, spend some time working with certain nation, you will, know, you will never know at everything, right? So if you want to understand what drives people, why he says this, or why he made such a decision, try to understand his motivation. This is really important. And uh, we have one more slide, guys. Ola, back to you. Yes, because this slide is um, a perception of a regular team member after this one year on the project, because uh, we were somehow able to embrace all those differences and create one team rather than different teams in all the locations. And well, actually, when we try to think about how we're built, how we're constructed, we can define that um, Everyone puts something into the team, into how we work together, for example, uh, small gestures, uh, ability to chit chat while on a daily call before we go, go to the tasks, uh, perfect attention to detail, to, to code, but at the same time making sure that we deliver um, business requirements and um, also th this will to fight until release is delivered our job is done so even if we need to sit long hours we somehow enjoy working uh, together because well we're not treating ourselves and we're not being treated only like an asset but people with their emotions uh, hobbies and so on and um, uh, of course, our company has many diversity and inclusion initiatives, but I think that um, um, we can be somehow proud that within our team, we were able to incorporate 
so many uh, influences around this uh, just on a daily basis. Okay, so I think that's all from us. Thank you very much.